even though everyone develops at slightly different paces. Almost everyone hits the same general developing milestones and learns the same set of skills at about the same time, more or less. These are things like language and communication, socializing, cognitive skills like problem solving and physical milestones like walking, crawling and fine motor skills, all of which progresses. The brain develops if one of these doesn't develop as scheduled depending on the severity. It may be described as a type of neurodevelopmental disorder. Neuro referring to brain, especially when certain skills related to socializing and communicating don't proceed as normally. It can result in isolation, which is where the name autism originated. Since auto means self, so autism refers to a condition where somebody might be removed from social interaction in communication leaving them alone or isolated. Before 2013, the Diagnostic and Statistically Manual for Mental Disorders, the fourth edition or the DSMA-4 described autism as one of the several pervasive development disorders, which also includes Asperger's syndrome, childhood disintegrative disorder, and those not otherwise specified or PDD, NOS. Asperger's syndrome was used for children that appear to have characteristics of autism, like difficulties with social interaction or non-verbal communication but don't generally have significant delays in language or cognitive development. And therefore, Asperger's syndrome was sometimes referred to as a high-functioning form of autism. Childhood disintegrative disorder was used to describe late onset of developmental delays. So these children develop normally for their age, but then they seem to lose the acquired social and communication skills, sometimes within age, sometimes between age 2 and 10. Pervasive developmental disorder, not otherwise specified, is essentially a catch-all category in which patients meet some but not all features of autism, Asperger's syndrome or childhood disintegrative disorder. Researchers found, however, that separate diagnosis of these pervasive development disorders weren't consistent across different clinics since they tend to have very similar signs and symptoms. As of 2013, the DSM-5, a new revised edition, removed these terms and replaced them with Autism Spectrum Disorder or ASD, which encompasses all the previous pervasive developmental disorders but uses a scale or a spectrum that differentiates based on the severity of two major areas social communication and interaction deficient and restrictive or repetitive behavior interests and activities. For the social and communication area, there are four subcategories that clinicians look for deficits. The first is social reciprocity, which refers to how children respond or reciprocate in social interactions. So like how the area might be referring to being alone and not taking a role in social games. A second area of potential deficit is joint attention, which is the state of wanting to share an interest with someone else. So it's like, hey, check out this awesome thing I found. So an example impairment in this area might be a child not sharing their interest or amusement in an object with their parents. Next. There's nonverbal communication, which refers to difficulties either using nonverbal communication themselves or interpreting nonverbal cues from someone else. So maybe the child won't put their arms out when they want to be picked up, or maybe they won't be able to tell when a parent's upset, even if the parent's frowning and crossing their arms. The last subcategory of communication deficits is. In social relationships, so children have trouble developing and maintaining relationships. So maybe the child has a hard time making friends or they are able to make friends, but the reliever tends to drive the friends away. The other major area is called restrictive and repetitive behavior. And this category is pretty broad and can include a whole bunch of behaviors. 
some being more well known or categorized than others like lining up toys in a ritualistic sort of way or flapping one's hands or imitating words and phrases. The child might be fixed on certain routines like taking the same route every day to school or they might have restrictive patterns of interest like having a very specific and in-depth knowledge of titanic or vacuum cleaners. Children with autism spectrum disorder might exhibit one or more of these deficits and vary in how severe the deficit is. With that in mind, it's important to remember that each child with autism spectrum disorder is going to have a different spectrum of symptoms and deficits. Typically, clinicians will try to observe these behaviors in the child looking for these possible deficits since these behaviors are often more well known by the child's caretakers in the R, by the clinicians like their parents or their teachers, a meaningful diagnosis or autism spectrum disorder relies heavily on listening to what others are observing at school or in school. They might be given severity scores in each area which can help determine how much support the kid's going to need. For example, a severity level 1 would indicate the child needs some support for social communication. They might speak in full sentences and engage in communication, but normal back and forth conversation with others just doesn't seem to work. For repetitive and restrictive behavior, they might have difficulty switching between activities. On the other side of the spectrum, a level 3 severity means the child needs very substantial support and on the social communication side, they might display very few words, intelligible speech or rarely initiate an interaction with others. For repetitive behaviors, they might be extremely resistant to change and their behaviors seriously interfere with their daily life. It's thought that using this scale of symptoms as opposed to differentiating between pervasive developmental disorder will help give a more accurate and medically useful way to diagnose individuals. For example, those with what was previously described as Asperger's syndrome would likely fall closer to the severity level 1 than severity level 4. Generally speaking, autism spectrum disorder thought to have a genetic cause which ultimately affects brain development, specifically areas that affect social and communication behavior. With genes are a combination of genes that are affected in autism spectrum disorder, though is still very much a mystery. In addition, these are a bunch of environmental triggers that have to be explored, but at the time, there are no clear risk factors that have been identified. With that said, there is also no cure for autism spectrum disorder and treatment or management has specifically and carefully tailored to each child. And this includes things like specialized education programs and behavior therapy that all seek to maximize quality of life and functional independence. All right, as a quick recap, autism is a developmental disorder where an individual has difficulty with social interactions and communication, often leaving them socially isolated. This disorder, along a spectrum of communication and interaction deficits, as well as restrictive or repetitive behavior interest in activities. A diagnosis of autism spectrum disorder requires significant input from caretakers and management of the disease is highly individualized. Thank you for watching our video. If you would like to watch similar videos, then subscribe to our channel.